cereal. So children, as you can see, we are going to create this planet. So let's just immediately start. So let's start with creating a planet. It is very simple. We just need to delete the default cube and add a UV sphere. Now we need to give this some textures. So if you look at UV editing, you can see that it is already UV unwrapped. So we do not really have to care about that. But into shading, we can start to add some materials. So you can click on new and I'm going to do, um, yeah, delete the principal shader and just add a diffuse. It's going to go very simple. PSTF goes into the surface and now we can add an image texture. But we don't have a texture yet. So we need to get a texture. You can get the texture from this website here. And here you can see that we can all these planets for free, right? So uh, you can choose anyone that you like. I did Jupiter, but I would love to see what you guys come up with with these other colors. Then just open them in here. And here you can see that I have it. And then we have a very nice texture. As last, I would like to add a modifier, a subdivision surface. So our planet gets a little bit more round. Now that we have our planet, I want to reposition my camera. So I go to layout and then I'll just go to one. This is my front view and I want my camera to also end up in this view. You can very simply just select your camera, go to view and then select align view. You can align active camera to view and you can see that the camera just jumped on here now. So this is perfect. Then you can yeah, start to think about what you want your camera to look like. So do you want your camera to have a this focal length or do you want your focal length to be way more? So 120. Um, you can also think about the resolution. Where are you going to upload it? I mainly upload on Instagram, maybe TikTok, and it seems that the resolution, a square resolution works better for those kinds of uh, social media. So I'll do 1080 by 1080 you can see that we have a nice and square output. I'm not gonna zoom in or out yet too much because we still need to add some extra parts to this scene. Now we need to add our triangle, which essentially is going to be kind of a portal. This planet comes out of nowhere and just, you know, appears in a very cool way. How do we do this? Very, very simple. We just add a circle and this circle is going to have three vertices instead of 32. So now you can see that this becomes a nice um, triangle, right? So you can make this a bit bigger, then go into your camera view again, and then rotate this so you can, yeah, you get some cool effects, let's say. Mm. I personally want my, uh, my planet to be a bit more impressive. And one way to do this is to just make it bigger and yeah, you have to play a little bit around with whatever you have. But if you want to make it appear bigger, you can of course also just make the triangle smaller. The problem with that is you can see that the triangle yeah, then goes inside of this uh, mesh and we don't really want that. Or we at least don't want to see it. What you could do is uh, go to this view and move it here in front, right? So now from a camera view, it still looks like it goes in front, um, but in the back, it just goes through here. You can also change this, of course. So you could also just move these backwards like this. So it looks a little bit like a different kind of triangle from this side of view, but from here, it still looks kind of the same, right? So there are multiple ways to actually do this. Um, do whatever makes you happy, whatever looks cool. Just make sure that, uh, yeah, this planet kind of looks impressive, right? So that is kind of the goal that we're going for. Okay, so how do we make this triangle more solid? Because now it's still just a, yeah, an edge, right? It's an edge loop. So what we can do is we can select it, go to object, and then convert curve from mesh. Okay, so now there's a curve, and now here we have some extra options. So if you go to the object data properties, you can see that now we have a geometry tab, and we can put the bevel depth higher. I first like to apply the scale with Ctrl A, scale, and then put this depth not too high, maybe 0 0.001, something like that, or 0 0.002 could also work, right? Just don't make it too big. Yeah, this looks cool. Now give it a shade smooth with W, shade smooth. So this is how we create this triangle. 
now we want to make sure that this part of the planet actually disappears because we only want to see whatever comes out of the portal. So how do we do this? Well, let's create just a, a cube, something like that. Make sure it is big enough. And then we want to rotate it in such a way that these lines, so um, the front line of the cube and the back of the cube kind of match up with each other. It's a bit hard because we of course have a depth of field in our camera, right? So keep that into mind. But they just have to match up a little bit, something like this, right? So don't make it, don't take it too seriously, but something like this would work. Then, of course, also rotate it so it works on this axis. Uh, something like this. And what you want to uh, do here, it needs to yeah, go a bit inside of this uh, tube that we just made, so the triangle. But it shouldn't go too far outside of it or um, inside, just in the middle somewhere. And that will work great. So just, yeah, it takes a little bit of playing around, but you will get there for sure. And once you think you have it, you will select your planet, go to modifiers, and then add a Boolean modifier. And then as object, you select this object. And when you hide it, you can see that that part of the planet is hidden. So when you render it, you will still see it and I can show you. So here you can see that we can still see the cube. We don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the cube go into the object properties and then do visibility and show in renders should be turned off. So now when we render it, we cannot see it anymore. So now what we need is we need a background and we need a special kind of background for the portal. The portal needs to be animated and you know, those are kind of flames or whatever, like a nebula, which uh, just turns around, but it looks very cool. So how do we do this? Very simple. We just add a plane, rotate it, and scale it up. So these are going to be our stars. So I'll just move this backwards a bit. Bam. We're just going to create a very simple material. Just click on new. I'm also going to put a diffuse shade in here. So diffuse here, then a image texture. Color goes to color, open, and I'm going to open this one. And the next thing that we need to do, just add a mix shader. And I'm going to add an emission here. Emission goes into here, and then we just add a color to our emission. And here we have that some extra emission is being emitted from these uh, yeah little stars that we have. So it doesn't have to be this bright, maybe 0.2. But what you can see, or what actually happens here, if you look at our UV editing, you can see that our square kind of gets stretched over this whole area. And that is not really what we need. So if you just click on U and unwrap it again, now we get a... Uh, yeah, it doesn't get squeezed together, let's say. So um, this should work better for our end result. And it yeah, kind of looks good. So uh, we're going to keep it at this for right now. And the next thing that we need, we need an extra little geometry for this triangle. So what I like to do is I like to just duplicate this background, move it a bit forward here. Make sure it doesn't intertwine. Go big backwards. So here, go to your camera view. And with this part, I want to edit it. And I'm going to create a one of these vertices in each corner. So we, of course, have four vertices instead of three. So we're going to delete one of them, which is going to be this one. And then these, which are still over, you can just select them all, click on F to fill up. And that is essentially our geometry. You have to UV unwrap it again. So to click on U and unwrap. And here we have our unwrap. Looks good. And the next thing that we need to do is create another material for that stuff. So. Let's just go into shading again. So for this texture, we can just duplicate the stars and then um, recall it like nebula, something like that. And what we can do with this, um, we can use the emission shader. So we're going to put the emission in here. I'm going to delete the mix and the diffuse for right now. 
and we can add another texture in here, which is going to be this kind of nebula texture. And then what we can do is we can put this in the strength and here we can change the color. So here you can change any color that you want. Do you want blue? Everything will look cool. Um, let's actually go for something bluish right now. And what you can do now is you can essentially create a math node. So math here. And if you put the multiply on and make it stronger, you can see that you make it. Uh, you can make it quite strong if you want. And you can also put a another node before here. Maybe you want to put this at power and play a little bit around. So it's yeah, we have some of those darker spots as well. So it's not all too bright. So yeah, you can play around with these two uh, nodes. As you can see, they work in a great way. And then if you have whatever you want, the last thing that you need to select is the triangle. And this just needs to be an emission node, right? So we can delete this principal shader and add an emission. Bam. And then this can kind of be the same color as what we have for this one here. But, but of course, now we cannot really see what is happening. And it has multiple reasons. We don't really have a bloom or glare on here. So it doesn't really showcase the material uh, perfectly. Plus, we also do not really have our animation yet. So the animation, we can animate two things. We can animate the planet and this nebula. Let's first start with the planet. So I'm just gonna grab a timeline out of here. So here, change this to timeline and we can rotate this. First of all, I can see that we have a flat shading. So just go W, shade smooth, and we have it nice and smooth. And now we can start to think about how long we want our animation to take. In mine, I did, I think, 200 frames, but you can make it uh, shorter or longer, whatever you want. Then, at frame one, I want it to be here. So, I, and then do lock rod scale. Then, at frame 200, I want it to rotate for 360 degrees. So, I'm going to go here. Then, rotation is 360. Right click, insert keyframe. So, now you can see that my planet rotates around. The only problem that we have now is that it will start very slowly, as you can see, and it will end also very slowly. Why is this? Let me show you. If we go to our graph editor, you can see in our graph here that we have a little curve. And this curve is a Bezier, as you can see. It is not linear, but it is a Bezier curve. And this is why it starts slowly, it then speeds up, and here it will be linear, and then it slows off again. You just have to go here, actually select the Z Euler rotation, then change the interpolation from Bezier to linear, and it's now nice and linear. So what you will see now is if we go just back into the timeline, if we play this, it will have the same speed at every single time. Very cool. The next thing that we can do is we can animate this nebula in the back. How do we do this? It's going to be also very simple. So let's just go back here. And we can add a texture coordinate node and a mapping node. Texture coordinate, the UV goes into the vector here and a vector goes into this uh, image texture. Now, if you look at this mapping node, you can see that if we increase the degrees at the Z axis, that it rotates. Very cool. The only problem here is that our UVs are so big. So if it rotates, it kind of goes over these lines and that is how we get these kind of cuts in between. So you can literally just make this smaller move it to a little bit of a more interesting area, which will be around here. And we can start to rotate it and you can see that it doesn't go out of bounds here. So this doesn't really look good anymore, but we have a quick fix. Just go to back to shading. Then we can play around with the power to get more of these dark areas here. Very cool. So now if we go from zero to 360, you can see that we get a very nice, um, yeah, animation in between here. You don't have to go all the way from zero to 360. What you also could do is go to frame one, right click, insert keyframe at frame z at a Z rotation of zero. Let's do the same for frame 200, right click, insert keyframe. 
And at frame 100, I'm going to just move it up a little bit. Maybe like 60 degrees, whatever. Right click, insert keyframe. And what happens now? Now we go from zero to 60 degrees. And then it slowly goes back. Very cool. Also here, you can play around with some of the graphs that we have. So right now you can see that we already have a nice smooth graph, which that is what I would do here. I would keep it at Bezier, but you can make this bigger, for instance. So now it speeds up a little bit more in the beginning, as you can see here, and it stays longer at the end. So if you play this, you can see that it spins, hoppa, and then stays a bit longer at the end and then moves back. Very cool. So this is how we animate both of these parts. So our animation is done, and now you can start to render. Um, we still need to reposition our camera. The only problem is, if we reposition our camera, we need to change stuff again. Um, that's just how it is, like, we can't really change too much about it. So I'm gonna reposition my camera a little bit, um, till here. But you can see that now, this uh, back triangle doesn't really fit anymore, so I need to re like, change that a little bit so it fits again, uh, here. here and here then also what you can see here is that we have some shading artifacts on this planet so we need to change that go in here in your object data properties of the planet go to normals and make sure the auto smooth is on also you can see that mine gets cut off a bit early so this cube that we created before i need to change also a little bit so I'll rotate a bit. It's just a very quick fix, to be honest. Uh, nothing really big you need to change. But that's just because our camera has a focal length. So if you zoom in or out, it changes also the position of these things, right? So um, yeah, now it's good again. And you can render this in Eevee or in Cycles, but to be honest, in this case, I will do it in Eevee. It's just way simpler, and our bloom is immediate. Okay, so what you can do is you can go in here into your render settings, put on bloom, and nothing will happen. Why is that? That is because our emissions are not strong enough. So you can select your triangle here, uh, look for our emission, and I'll put the strength up maybe to even 50. And now you can see that we have a little bit of a bloom around here. Is that enough? No. So I'm going to play around with the intensity. You can play around with the radius, right? If you want a big or smaller radius, threshold, all of this good stuff. You can just play a little bit around and I would love to see what you guys come up with. And the same, of course, for this part here on the inside. If you want that to be brighter as well, just put the multiply up and you can see that we get some great brightness. Very cool, and that is essentially how we create this. So please show me some other colors that you guys have made. I want to look at some different planets. Maybe you are not doing a triangle, but something else, a different kind of portal. Um, I'm really, really curious. So good luck.